Did you catch Josh Rogan on Joe Rogan? Lab leak, not only possible, but probable, given the huge smoking gun of the cover-up. Thoughts? Feel vindicated? Keep up the good work. Much love from France. I did not see Josh Rogan on. I saw Joe that Rogan. he was on. I did not uh, see it. Um, vindicated is a weird term. Yeah. I think the thing that I feel is, okay, can we play this through so that we're not in the situation next time? Right. The fact that we managed to get lab leak to the point that it can be discussed in polite company was incredibly dangerous and it was incredibly difficult and it was unlikely to work. Right. We managed because there were a lot of very clever people who had the chops to navigate the evidence. There were a lot mm -hmm. of us who were willing to talk about it in public to this one did not come out the way they usually do. But the point is, you know, that force that wants to tell us what to think is there. It's screwed up in this case. Can we now extrapolate to the other stuff that it's clearly lying to us about, right? Which doesn't make any of this clear. My point in the uh, first part of the podcast was that what you need is a huge budget for nuance in all of these cases because it doesn't marshal towards one team or the other. It marshals towards these... Uh, intermediate, ambiguous, gray as can be answers. Um, but, you know, the next time we're not going to get uh, so lucky. And let's just learn from this case. Yeah, I guess I would um, just picking up on your, um, your focusing on that word vindicated. I think it's, um, it's a dangerous word to be thinking about in this landscape, precisely because uh, if lab leak turns out to be the actual origin of SARS-CoV-2, um, it is true that it was something that you and we were talking about early. We should have been interested in and willing to talk about that early if it was simply a possibility, no matter how likely it seemed to us or how likely it actually was. And so you want people who are actually good faith, careful thinkers to be saying this thing is a possibility and that thing's a possibility all the time and have, in fact, depending on how many hypotheses that they are talking about for any given explanation, mostly not have those hypotheses be borne out. Like that, that is what, that is what discerning between hypotheses is about. It's the very rare situation where you have two and only two and there's one that's being promoted and the, you know, black sheep hypothesis is actually the true one. And you're there, you know, talking about the black sheep hypothesis. That's a that's a super rare situation. And that's not even descriptive of what um, is, is going on here. So you want all the possible hypotheses on the table. And it is certainly true that with all the perverse incentives that we know there to be know there to be in the world right now that there will always be one or two or many that aren't really being discussed and you want people everyone but people like us will tend to be those saying ah there's also this possibility even if we don't even think it's true but that's a possibility let us establish what the complete solution set of possibilities are and if those possibilities that we've now added to what we think is a complete solution set of possibilities don't end up being right, that doesn't mean we were wrong to bring them up. That right. means that those hypotheses weren't correct. Right. It has nothing to do with being vindicated or not. It has to do with we need to get all of the possible hypotheses on the table so we can talk freely. Uh, I totally agree with this. And, it, you know, again, it's not the most intuitive thing in the world, but yeah. the ability to formally put hypotheses on the table and, you know, in general, we do have an opinion about what hypotheses we think are most likely. It has, sure. no, it has no implication whatsoever for whether you've put them on the table correctly. You've said what the predictions would be if they were true, and then you find out if they are. Yeah. Um, but I would also just, to wrap this up, point out something interesting is going on here because... Mm -hmm. The lab leak turns out to be probable. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to see that back in April, May last April, year. April, May of that. last year. The vaccine looks like it has risks. This is brand new, but this issue of the spike protein, the vaccine appears to have risks beyond what one would expect based on um, the PR. Masks don't need to be worn outdoors mm -hmm. like 
why are we getting these things when everybody else is way behind on them, right? You know, that has to do with the freedom to just simply do the analysis, right? Yes. So the fact that you have virtually nobody who has the ability to do the analysis based on, you know, their training in history and science and the freedom to do the analysis based on the career that they hold is killing us. Yes. And the perverse incentives are all over the goddamn place. Yes. And the fact is, if you want to be healthy and, you know, act in your interest and society's interest, then, you know, you need more people who are free to talk. Yeah. Right? And, you know, that's the thing we should really be shocked at is yes. how few people are in a position to do it. Yes. Yes.